<laughs> if you've just joined us, <laughs> we're learning D. And the sun shining. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, there we oh. go. They're everything. Really, my family's my life. The one house where you make as much noise as you want, nobody gets upset. <laughs> We've just got to the Sioux in Superstar. <laughs> got a ways to go. We're backstage. I feel. I was just out of step with what was going on. I sort of had to take a bunch of steps back and start again. And who wouldn't want to be Keith Urban? 15 million record sales, four Grammy Awards, married to the beautiful Nicole Kidman, two gorgeous children, and now a hit TV show. The kid from Caboolture finally has it all. Congratulations on a massive year. Not only are you on, you know, one of the biggest shows in Australian history, you've been inducted into the Grand Ole Opry. Mm. Your album is now mainstream number one hit in Australia. What does all that mean to you at your point in your career? Just huge gratitude for people being able to discover my music. You're a huge star in America and in, in the home of country music in America. Why does it sort of matter to be successful in Australia still? Well, I love coming back to tour. Um, we spend Christmases down here. And I think more so um, it's just the fact that there's a lot of people that like the kind of music I do and a lot of other artists like me that don't know about the music. Urban. You went to Nashville on the strength of being a uh, male vocalist of the year, I think, at Tamworth. Mm. You had four hit records in Australia. Did you imagine that it would be relatively easy to break into Nashville on the back of that? Um, I thought it wouldn't be as hard as it was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it'd be easy, but um, I, I sure wasn't uh, ready for how difficult and long the whole thing would take. Nashville is the kind of place where um, they don't want to openly say, you suck, you're absolutely <laughs> terrible, it'll never work. It's very hard to get that sort of clear critiquing. And so people would sort of be saying, oh, it's great, it's excellent, fantastic. Did you suck? How, how could you have yeah. sucked? I, um, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was out of step. You know, I was just out of step with what was going on and uh, I sort of had to go take a bunch of steps back and start again. Strike blind me out of me. I lob into Nashville and I've progressed from here to here. They haven't seen any of the evolution. They just see where I'm at and they're like, what the hell is this, you know? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But to me, I sort of thought, well, if they knew where I had come from and gotten to this place, it would probably make more sense. I can hear the, name the first trip that we did to Nashville was in 1989 and um, I, you know my manager and I at the time we, we went around all these record companies and I had this demo and it was an awful demo but I thought it was pretty good and uh, you know I'm playing it to everybody and nobody's interested in it. Um, we came back to Australia and I got one letter and it could have been a stock letter I don't know right all I know is that I got a letter I was very excited and she basically said I listened to your demo I don't know if she did and she said, I quite enjoyed it. And she said, but radio is enjoying a traditional time right now and your music seems um, uh, in a different place. And she said, but I hope you can find a good home here in Nashville. <laughs> and I read this and interpreted it in such a way that I thought, oh, I've just got to get there and then start paying my dues and you know, hopefully the music will sync up with where I'm at at some point. And that took a brisk 10 years. <laughs> Those 10 years were a challenge. Doggedly chasing his dreams thousands of miles away from family and friends, Urban found refuge in alcohol and drugs, an addiction he finally kicked six years ago when he married Nicole and had a family. They're your anchor and the music mm. is, the, is what, the air, I guess. Is it? I mean, they're everything. They're, 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 it's, it's my life. That's really, my family's my life. How do you fit the dedication that you have needed to bring to music around family? By just keeping my family first and then 
that fills me with a sense of love and passion that, that you know, only goes to fuel the music that much more to me. This sort of purpose to everything now. It's not sort of just aimless wandering around the wilderness, you know. If you had had this family when you were starting out in your career, how do you think it would have gone for you? Would you have been able to build the career that you, that you have? You know, I think I can't answer that question because it didn't go that way for me. Um, but there's any amount of people that have every combination of a, of a career trajectory. And I don't believe you've got to be miserable and single and, uh, and I don't believe you have to have somebody in your life and I don't, I don't believe there's any have to's. I think there's just, you have to answer the yearning and the calling in you. You have to follow your bliss. And so if your bliss is purely uh, your artistic goal or your dreams and your visions and your love life and everything comes second, then that's the way it's going to be. But you can't complain that you don't have somebody wonderful in your life because you're not dedicating the time to it. So um, I had to learn all of that the hard way. When you were starting out, would you have gone on a show called The Voice? I couldn't sing to the back of people's chairs. I could not do that. And, and it is a really awful feeling not being able to turn for people more often than, than we get to do. Because first of all, we've only, we can only do it 12 times and then we're done. And we listen to 120 people. Went on a show called Pot of Gold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, uh, was uh, heavily judged by um, Bernard King at the time. I was nine. I know that experience of performing in front of somebody and then getting feedback in front of a television audience. It's, it's quite daunting. What did he say to you? I did a, I did a Dolly Parton song. And, uh, because it was pre my voice breaking, I used to be able to sing in her key. You know? <laughs> it's right up here. And, uh, <laughs> so I was doing all these Dolly Parton songs and he said, uh, one of his lines was he said, I desperately encourage you to escape the mediocrity, get out of country and western and get into some real music. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm nine, you know. He said, um, kindly learn to sing in tune because you're intrinsically a good musician. And I, ha I had to ask my mum what intrinsically meant. Um, given that there's a bit of coaching going on here, how game are you for a little bit of coaching? Yeah. I would like to look like a, a superstar around the campfire playing the guitar, but I cannot play a single chord. Uh, we can fix that. Are you serious? I'll try, yes. <laughs> yeah, if you're up for it. I'm up for it, are you? Yeah. Okay. Grab, grab that guitar. All right. He's also an intrinsically great guitar. coach. Oh my goodness. And, um, How much is this guitar worth? But I guess everyone has yep, their waterloo. Yep. You're not touching any of the other strings. Okay. Oh, right. and you and so your fancy nails could be problematic. I know. They're not seals nails. No. Put your finger right no. there. Then... If you've just joined us, <laughs> we're learning D. <laughs> <laughs> We've just got to the Sioux in Superstar. <laughs> Got a ways to go. I'm sunk. This is it. <laughs> this is harder than it looks. Oh, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. If your fingers are excruciatingly painful, you're just about there. <laughs> <laughs> You started this when you were six, right? Mm. You only had tiny little short six-year-old fingers. Yeah. How on earth did you get them around all of that? I guess um, I just really wanted to play, but they hurt so much. And I used to go in and say to my parents, oh, my fingers hurt. I don't want to keep doing it. And their reverse psychology was, oh, well, then don't. I was like, oh, <laughs> I wanted some sort of argument, you know. And so I just kept playing. But it, they hurt for a long time. And then slowly... They stop hurting. And then you build up calluses. Have you got calluses on your fingers? No, I don't think so. No, you haven't really. Calluses are on the inside maybe now. Oh, that's deep. Deep calluses. <laughs> that makes you fascinating. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that. You're here in Australia without the family at the moment. I believe that they've been here quite a lot for you. Are mm. they coming back soon? Yeah, very soon. It's, it's really great having them here. Is Nicole loving the competition? She yeah. She wanted you to do it. Yeah, she is. I mean, uh, when we were doing uh, a lot of the original blind auditions in the battle round, she came down and was, was watching a few of the shows backstage. I just, it's, I'm glad she loves it too. Sunday Rose is, I think she'll turn four this year, won't she? Four so in July, yeah. She's kind of, I suppose, getting to an age where if she's going to be musical, you'd be seeing signs of it. Mm -hmm. Are there signs of it? Yeah, I think she's, she loves singing. So um, that's, that's a good start. And uh, she's got exposure to, you know, piano and, and, and uh, I'm in the midst of trying to get her a little drum kit and a few little... <laughs> 
little instruments so she can gravitate towards them if she you know, feels it. And have a little soundproof room for her at home. Oh, no, it's the one house where you make as much noise as you want and everybody gets upset. Beautiful. Yeah. That's perfect. Definitely. Is this the best space you've ever been in in your life, do you think? Without doubt. Without doubt, yeah. Must be a nice thing to say. It's a nice thing to feel. Mm.